This is EA Worldview's tip sheet for the week. Number six, Venezuela. There's a bit of trouble brewing in the South American country, even if it's not exactly making headlines outside the region. The government and Nicolas Maduro is facing increasing demonstrations with reports of violence in cities and now beyond them. Some over the weekend have noticed that statues of Hugo Chavez, the ideological leader of the Chavista movement, who gave way to Maduro after his death, well, his statues are also giving way now, at least in some of the videos we're seeing. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, as the more excited folks out there put it, that we're on the verge of a revolution. But it does mean the Maduro government is in an increasingly difficult situation. If it cannot, in effect, pack the courts to offset Parliament's protest, and if it cannot, in some way, seem to get control back of the streets, the economic situation in Venezuela, which gets worse and worse, hyperinflation, stagnation, no longer able to depend on oil revenues, means that government may be facing an internal coup. Number five, Afghanistan. Well, a few weeks ago, the U.S. took the headlines with the mother of all bombs, and that mother is now long gone. That bomb did nothing to dislocate the main situation, which is the conflict between the government and the Taliban in many areas of the country. And now the Taliban are on the offensive again, trying to move on the city of Kunduz. Even if that offensive is not successful, the Taliban continue to expand their hold in much of Afghanistan. This is not a unified country, and it is not a government which has a unified authority. Keep an eye out. Number four, the United Kingdom. Well, we've got no mother of all bombs here. We don't even have a coup. We've got a relatively boring election. So the initial tip is a non-tip. The Conservatives win the June 8th election with an increased majority, largely because the opposition Labour Party is not much of an opposition. But here is the tip that matters. To try to maintain its authority, the government will take a harder and harder line, cutting out the UK Independence Party, which had been the one that pushed Brexit initially. When it pushes that harder line, the backlash will be a harder line from the European Union, making negotiations more difficult over Brexit after the election results are in. Number three, Iran. There's an election campaign going on in that country as well. This one on the surface is between President Rouhani, a centrist, and two conservative challengers, a cleric named Abraham Raisi and Tehran Mayor Mohammed Bakr Halibaf. But that's not what you want to be watching out for. It's the conflict between Rouhani and the elite military of the Revolutionary Guards that is overtaking the campaign. Last week, Rouhani went public in denouncing not only Iran's ballistic missile test on settling the nuclear deal it signed in July 15 with the West and other powers, but also saying that slogans on those missiles, although he didn't name them, those slogans include death to Israel, were counterproductive. Well, guess who oversees that missile testing program and those slogans? That's right, the guards, and they are none too happy. Will this mean that Rouhani is blocked from winning the election if he has most votes? Probably not but it does mean the guards will be even more intent on putting Rouhani in his box, unable to do much if he does have a second term. Will the Supreme Leader support the guards? That's what to watch out for. My bet is yes. Number two, France. Well, the results have come in, and Emmanuel Macron has triumphed by about a two-to-one margin over the far-right candidate Marine Le Pen of the National Front. So that immediate sound you hear is one of relief that another far-right populist, not naming names in other countries who have succeeded, has managed to get power. But that doesn't remove the issues in France. There is still tension over the economic situation, tension over immigration, and not everyone, like Macron, is a dedicated fan of the European Union. So it's now onto the parliamentary elections next month, which means while there is now breathing space, for those who fear the surge of far-right nationalism, it is already on to the next challenge. And number one, moving from one populist to another, this is the week when Donald Trump will come under a different kind of pressure. No, he doesn't face another election quite yet, or even impeachment. And yes, he got a token victory 
when the House of Representatives finally pushed through a version of the health care bill to repeal Obamacare. But that's going to mean little when the Trump-Russia investigations research this week. Specifically, when former Attorney General Sally Yates says she warned that administration about the Russia links of a national security advisor named Michael Flynn just before he was forced out over the conversations with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. Here's the bigger picture. Someone probably told Flynn to have those conversations with the Russian ambassador. And if that comes out, then this cannot be contained. So here's your tip. The Trump administration will trash Yates. They'll say that she's a secret Democrat with ties to the Democratic National Committee. They will, flip, they will throw Flynn under the bus and say, we never knew what he was doing. That's all smoke, but it's unlikely to hide the fire that will continue to burn. That's our tip sheet for this week. Let's see how we do next week and then move on with your next set of how to get beyond the headlines.